Shit. 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 Got my nigga cheese in this bitch. Midwest. Midwest UGK, nigga. Oh, you already know. Shit. I said my hands on this money. I'm caught up in this lifestyle. This hundred round drummy. Hit a knock a nigga right down. My dope on my scale. If he knockin' watch lights out, my spot do be booming. I'm caught up in this lifestyle. My hands on this money. I'm caught up in this lifestyle. You know what's going on. It's time for that culture for the street. Hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel. Ding the notification bell. Don't leave about the trap till you've been served. And we finna serve everybody. Latch off the door. Trap open. We gonna get right to it, man. You know I gotta put the ski on when I'm talking about the rack. When I'm talking about side rack, I gotta throw the ski on because we talking about the demons. So we gonna get right to talking about the demons. But anyway, man, shout out to Lil Dirk. Shout out to Lil Reese. Shout out the whole side rack just because they created a whole space for them to live in in the culture of hip hop as far as bringing the culture of Chicago and embedding it and placing it into the, the world of hip hop for the state. It's been here, it's not going nowhere. The influence is probably, they probably had the highest influence in hip hop today. Um, They come from a dangerous culture. So, you know, the young generation of Chicago, majority of the youth have a real story to tell because they have been through the struggle. They have been through so much, you know what I'm saying? And it, it, today I would try to, I would, I would say that teens in Chicago got to grow up a little bit more faster than a lot of teens in a lot of areas because it's so dangerous. And if you don't adapt, you will die. But, you know, anyway, I did want to get into talking about Lil Dirt and Lil Reesey because as of lately, let me just say this first, though, because Little Reese been down with the 300 movement since before it hit TV, and we got to see it. And from my perspective, Little Reese been a loyal member to 300. When I say this, I'm talking about you. We seen him walk around with Keith. We seen him with Fredo Santana. We seen him with everybody that was under the 300 umbrella, and they really never had no fallouts like that, as far as the family went and that carried over for a long time because even though it was so many different crews 600 300 otf O block you got all these different other crews i'm i can't name them all but you got all these it's just a conglom a conglomerate of crews and for it to go this long and these niggas be young i gotta tilt my hat to that because we can't even we don't even see grown ass men do this with groups of people they got situations gangs organizations whatever but we seen these young dudes get rich out of a dangerous culture stamp the culture in hip-hop and carry the torch for it for over a decade and we still watching it today and now a whole new generation of chicago drill music is surfacing new artists it created a lane for chicago it created a lane for the young generation but with Lil Reese, he never was this super duper rap star. His CDs didn't sell like the Dirks, the Keeps, the Herbos. You see what I'm saying? So I look at him as a valuable piece to 300 because of his loyalty. No matter how much money niggas was making, moves they was making, whether they was making them without him, whether they was doing things without him, whether he wasn't around at the time, he was humble enough to, to play his position. Stay with his brand. He was humble enough to, to stay stumped down. And we didn't watch Lil Reese get beat up, shot, robbed, set up. And in the, you know, these is a lot of losses he took in the process of all of this. We didn't watch Lil Reese go through more than probably anybody in 300. Over social media, we got to see everything that was happening to Lil Reese. And Lil Reese, he, you know, he got to recover from the issues he went through, but at the same time, he didn't fade to black in the industry. His name still is what it is, regardless if his ops feel like it's disrespect. You know what I mean? But me, personally, I feel like Lil Reese is a loyal member to 300. 
300 is a big group that involves many different cliques. And Dirk being the breadwinner out of 300 right now, we can honestly agree. Shouldn't nobody be disagreeing with me right now when I say Dirk is the breadwinner of OTF. Not just OTF, but he's the breadwinner of Chicago right now. And you didn't have people in OTF, whether they was from 600 or other cliques and crews, that was part of OTF that they left. Some people complained about being like Dirk want them to be yes man. Da, 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 da. We never heard Reese say that. But we also, as of lately, been seeing Dirk. Talking about um, Lamron and, 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 and him bringing up Lamron like that is kind of separating situations because, okay, if you're a street nigga, you understand what I'm saying when I say this. Even in the projects, it's like this. It could be a dominant group of people in the projects that's running things. They're never the only group. It's always other groups in the project. The project is like its own city. So it's never just going to be one group of niggas that's running around being reckless. You got packs, everybody doing their thing, but you're going to have one pack that's, that stamps that project, but you're going to have other clicks too. And when it comes to blocks, it's the same thing, especially when your block is big. When your block is big, you're going to have a crew on this end. You're going to have a crew up the street. You're going to have a crew in the middle. You're going to have a crew a little bit more up the street. And you're going to have another crew at the end of the street. It, and some of them crews might be together. Some of them crews might not be together. Some of them crews might be allies to some people that the other crews don't get along with. This is just natural when it comes to territory. But with Lamron, when Dirk and them came in and they start really branding Lamron, as they section, as they street, as they block. They wasn't separating Lamron. They wasn't saying, well, you from down the street for real, and we from this part of Lamron. No, they was all representing Lamron. Now all of a sudden, it's two different sides of Lamron. Oh, if you ain't from this OTF and Lamron, two different things. Nigga, you come from Lamron. So how can OTF and Lamron be two different things if the seed was planted on Lamron? Somebody got to explain that to me. Now, I ain't saying I don't understand that it's different crews and cliques and shit like that. But at the end of the day, y'all from the same section. Y'all can agree to disagree, but at the same time, y'all stand for the same part of the street. Okay, I understand. Tate Town, all these other different crews and cliques that's a part of Lamron. So tell me this. if anybody even has an idea of to why Lamron all of his of a sudden is, is splitting in part. It's a dispute. It's it's almost like since Von died, rest in peace, King Von. It seems like ever since Von died, O Block, OTF, the 600 card, the 300 card, everybody that's kind of tied to each other under that 300 umbrella. It seems like it's turmoil inside of that situation, and it's been for a couple years. Ever since Vaughn been gone, it's been turmoil. It seems like Vaughn was like the grandfather to the situation because you know how our grandparents kept our family together. When they passed, the family fell apart. This is what we're watching right now. Vaughn gone, and to me, I feel like he was the he was the spokesperson for the street. He was the one that went out there and talked to the sharks, not Dirk. So in a way, I kind of feel like they had a certain level of respect for Vaughn, where Vaughn can keep the flames down when the turmoil got to a certain point. But now Vaughn gone, and we seeing indirect posts on IG. We seeing shots being taken in interviews. We seeing certain people like Reese being around people that we not normally used to seeing like that that's coming to the light, that we are allegedly, we hearing that, Dirk having problems with. So at the end of the day, it's kind of putting Reese in a certain situation because you a loyal member. And if you fuck with Dirk and them, but you still fuck with all the other homies over here, which he trying to separate himself from, he can't really fault you for that because these niggas ain't did you no type of wrong for you to choose a side in the situation. You being a loyal member to the whole situation. I don't blame Reese for that. 
Reese being a real nigga, man. Money shouldn't make you change on certain niggas that never changed on you, bro. Loyalty worth all more than all of that shit, man. And once again, man, shout out to the whole shot rack because I don't pick no size with the GDBD and all the other gang shit, man. I'm a street nigga. I fuck with real niggas. If you a real nigga, stump down nigga, I fucks with you. I don't give a fuck where you live at. But to Chicago, man, keep doing y'all shit. Keep standing on business. And, 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 and hopefully a lot of these beefs can die down and niggas can get to their money because Chicago niggas getting a lot of money right now. Legal money. To where you don't have to go outside and, and, and worry about hitting a nigga with that switch to try to get some bread and finish getting your hustle on. You getting a legal bag. So I hope this little dirt and this, because the internet blowing it up a little bit more than what I feel like it really is. I hope these niggas still got their bond. I hope the situation cool. I hope 600, 300, everybody that's involved with 300, the movement, OTF, Lamron, all of that. Come together, squash their problems, unite and get stronger than ever and get back to their money, man, because it's a lot of mouths getting fed. It's a lot of niggas that's being put in position that wasn't in position at all prior to niggas getting to a bag and bringing the niggas along for the ride. So niggas need to be humble enough to understand that. But at the same time, keep your motherfucking hood firm, nigga. And I'm talking to all the demons, nigga. Keep your motherfucking hood firm. Salute to the rack, man. It's time for that. Coach for, for the streets, man. Hosted by Mafia and Paint, man. Y'all subscribe to the channel. Like the motherfucking video, man. Ding that notification bell. Stay logged into the trap. The latch always off the back door. You just ain't going to be able to back door. We out. Hey though, hey it's the mafia. This shit, hey, this shit for all the gangsters. Real story. Hey, chugging out the double doors, cuz in the six four. Child was hitting switches on these niggas back in '94. Basketball practice, and after that, I'm back to selling dope. When the cops hit the ab, I done made a rack off of my pager though. When the wop hit my box, I'ma hit them back. I'm on the payphone. My shoebox getting full. I need to go buy me a safe for real. It's treacherous outside, not supposed to have it, but I paid for it. A brand new out the box. Tooley on me while I'm trapped. And I hope.